Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Friends, welcome back. Let us now proceed to analyze the stability of a wing and tail combination, where in our previous lecture we talked about wing alone configuration for which the CM about CG we have estimated and then we bifurcated that into two components CM0 and CM alpha, where we figured out C, CM0 has to be for CM0 has to be greater than 0, right. We need to have a reflex aerofoil for a wing alone configuration and then for CL alpha to be CM alpha to be less than 0 for static stability condition to satisfy that condition, we need CG should be ahead of the aerodynamic center. Okay. Now, let us look about look at the contribution of wing and tail combination Combination and its contribution towards static stability. So, I would like to divide this into two partitions. So, now let us have this wing and tail. So, say this is my fuselage reference line. Say our wing coincides with the chord of the wing coincides with the fuselage reference line here. Say so this is the chord. Okay. So the chord of the wing coincides with the fuselage reference line. And then we have a tail at after wing, right? And then we Right, uh, and also let us not consider about uh, the z offset of the CG. Okay. So, we have fuselage difference line, and for the wing, we know there is an aerodynamic center for this wing which is located at a distance x AC at the leading edge of the wing, right. and the CG of this aircraft with a tail, we will we'll try, we will draw the tail very soon. So, he is located at a distance x cg with respect to leading edge of the wing. Okay. And we have a tail, tail here, we added a tail. Let us say the chord line of the tail is oriented or inclined at set an angle called I of t, right, tail setting angle. I of t is known as tail setting angle with respect to the fuselage reference line. So, this is a chord, chord line of the tail, horizontal tail and I of t is the inclination of this chord line with, res, with respect to the fuselage reference line and we call this I of t as tail setting angle. This is tail setting angle. And in general, this tail is a symmetric, uh, the cross section of tail is a symmetric aerofoil. Uh, why? Because we know it is a, it has to produce equal amount of force on the either side of the deflection. The main of the aim of the tail is not to generate lift, to generate a moment, right, to control the orientation of the aircraft and also to provide static stability. So, that we will see how to control the aircraft that we will see in later when we talk about elevated deflection. So, for the time being we assume the tail is uh, like the tail is used to stabilize the aircraft and we will see how it is going to do that. And the tail is also located at a distance right, we also have an aerodynamic center for this tail which is located aft the leading edge here and this And the corresponding distance here is x AC of tail 
with respect to leading edge of the root cord of the wing and is measured parallel to the fuselage reference line. So, this is my fuselage reference line FRL. Now, when this is moving or in equilibrium at certain alpha, so moving at certain V infinity, this combination is moving at V infinity. So, we have lift perpendicular to V infinity, okay, lift of wing and at the same time we have moment about aerodynamic center of wing. Right. Similarly, we should have lifted the tail as well, right. So, but the flow near the wing may not be same as flow near the tail. Why? Because the wing we, we witnessed right from the lifting line theory, it, it creates a downwash behind the wing, is not it? So, because of the downwash, say this is my, so V infinity, actual V infinity, right. So, ideally this has to be my angle of attack, ideally it has to be there. But because of the downwash, no? there is a downward component of uh, velocity, downwash is nothing but the flow is pushed down, right. It was pushed down by this wing, right. It is heavy near near the wing, right, in the, in the vicinity of the wing. As we go behind, because there is a forward component, right, of the velocity, there is a like component of velocity in this direction and there is a downward direction and the component of velocity which is in the direction of flight or in the direction, so is higher, right, which means the free stream velocity is in the opposite direction to flight. So, which is higher, so the resultant will remain flat, but still there is some deviation from the actual flow that the wing faces. So, deviation at the tail compared to that of what the wing faces. So, that is nothing but the downwash because of this induced because of by this wing, right, at the tail. Right, say this is the downwash, so because of which the resultant free stream velocity here will be flattened. No? This is my velocity at the tail, Vt or V prime we call it, let us say V prime here, okay. So, or V infinity prime, okay. So, this particular change in angle is epsilon, okay. Is it clear? So, now effectively I can, so this is equivalent to this, so say, so this is equivalent to, these two are parallel, right. So, this is my V infinity and this is my epsilon. So, now the ac angle of attack that this tail C is with respect to this V infinity prime, right, isn't it. So, V infinity prime is a modified velocity at the tail because of the downwash induced by the wing, right. So, this downwash creates an angle epsilon with respect to the free stream velocity at the wing, V infinity. So, now the angle of attack that the tail C is with respect to this modified velocity which is V infinity prime and it is denoted by alpha at the tail, right. So, this alpha at the tail I can express this in terms of known quantities, for example, so I know what is tail setting angle here, I know what is wing angle of attack which I will be measuring using an angle of attack sensor there, right. So, I know alpha, I know wing setting angle, so can I express this in terms of these parameters and I can model this downwash, you know it is similar to that of alpha i, right, do you remember? So, this epsilon can be modeled, so is twice that of alpha i at the downstream. So, this is from the lifting line theory, this is two times of C L upon C L of wing, right, because this epsilon is because of the wing here. So, 2 pi, pi a r, right. So, this is how we generally estimate this, this can be expressed as a function of angle of attack. So, dou epsilon by dou alpha times alpha is equals to 2 times C L naught of wing plus C L alpha of wing times alpha upon 2 pi, sorry pi e a r. So, from this we can say that epsilon naught is equals to 2 times C L naught of wing upon pi e a r and epsilon or dou epsilon by dou alpha is equals to 2 C L alpha of wing upon pi e a r where E is a Oswald's efficiency factor, A r is the aspect ratio, fine. 
Okay. So once we know epsilon here, we'll be able to. Uh, so a epsilon is also known. Once we know CL alpha and the wing geometry, we'll be able to find out the induced downwash because of the wing at the tail, right? So now we know. Uh, uh, in our, we, if we know the all these quantities, like say i of t alpha and epsilon. Now I would like to express this tail tail angle of attack in terms of this known variables. So alpha t is equals to alpha, right? So this is this is alpha minus this particular angle will fetch me this particular uh, v infinity uh, angle made by v infinity with respect to Fuseli's reference line, right? That angle plus i of t will be my total angle of attack. Okay, so alpha minus epsilon. So epsilon is because of the downwash here. Right. So indicated by this green line, alpha minus epsilon plus i of t is the tail setting. Okay. So what I can do further? So alpha of t is equals to one minus do epsilon by do alpha times alpha plus epsilon naught plus i of t isn't it am i correct or not so if i substitute this particular expression in that equation what is alpha t is equals to uh, uh, what uh, epsilon can be minus uh, okay so this must be i of t minus epsilon naught so this is i of t minus epsilon. So that is that epsilon is equals to minus epsilon naught minus dou epsilon by dou alpha times alpha. So if I substitute that and take alpha common out, so separating the coefficients of alpha and constants, I'll have this particular expression. Okay. Now, so with this derivation, we now can proceed uh, with this understanding. We can we now can proceed. With the modeling of uh, moment no, for this particular configuration, wing and tail configuration, and we'll find out what is CM naught and CM alpha for this configuration, right? At the same time, we'll also look at what is the total lift from this wing, uh, from this combination, and then also the CL naught and CL alpha of this configuration, wing and tail combination. So now we know at the so the lift at the tail will be acting perpendicular to V infinity prime which is L of t, right? There will be a little drag but we are neglecting the drag, that horizontal component or the vertical offset of CG is not considered, right? And we proved that that is not affecting much, you know, with that flat plate flight, we demonstrated that if that is, if that is small, it is insignificant in, uh, for static stability contribution, isn't it? So I have L of t but I do not have a moment here, isn't it? Do I have a pitching moment? coefficient about or moment about aerodynamic center why because we are using a symmetric tail right in general it is symmetric 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 tail right? so made out of symmetric aerofoil so we don't have cmac there so now the wing lift so and assuming a small angle of attack so l w cos alpha will be l l w lift of wing multiplied by this offset with respect to CG contributes towards pitch up moment, right? So now taking moments about CG and lift of tail contributes towards pitch down moment. Am I correct or not? Lift of tail multiplied by the offset between this. Offset is what? This particular distance which is like the total distance of tail with respect to leading edge of root cord subtracted by the distance of CG or the distance of CG with respect to leading edge of the root code. If I subtract this distance from this total distance, what I have is this particular distance, uh, I mean the momentum between CG and the aerodynamic center of tail. Okay. So now, what is the total lift of the aircraft? A by C stands for aircraft here or say this is nothing but total lift of the aircraft L is equals to lift of wing plus lift of tail from the principal, uh, the, so do you remember those assumptions like uh, one of the assumptions talks about uh, principle of superposition. Right. So the total lift here from the assumption it is, it is equals to lift of wing plus lift of tail. So this is equals to, so half rho v square, so aircraft free stream velocity is equals to the wing free stream velocity times the reference area of the wing is reference area of the aircraft. CL 
is the CL of the aircraft is equals to half rho v square s times CL of wing plus half rho v prime square, isn't it? So v infinity prime square or say v infinity v infinity prime square which is at the tail, the, this is the velocity at the tail times s of the tail, right? So the lift generated by the tail is due to the area of the tail, isn't it? Plant form area of the tail and the velocity at the tail. The velocity at the tail we figured out it as v infinity prime which is modified due to the downwash and then the reference area of this tail is nothing but so plant form area of the tail which is s of t, right? Times the CL of tail here, okay? So now if I simplify this further, so the CL of the total aircraft is CL of wing plus half rho v infinity prime square upon half rho v infinity square, right? Times S of t upon S times CL of t, okay? So this particular factor, no, velocity at the tail upon velocity of uh, like dynamic pressure at the tail upon dynamic pressure at the wing, this particular factor is known as tail efficiency factor, okay? So this can be further written as CL of wing plus tail efficiency factor which is eta of ht times st upon s times cl of tail okay this is one important expression fine so further if i want to know what is the cl not of the total configuration and cl alpha of the total configuration what i can do is i can express in the linear regime of angle of attack the total aerodynamic cl is equals to as a function of alpha which is cl not plus CL alpha of the total aircraft times alpha of the total aircraft which is equals to CL naught of the wing plus CL alpha of the wing times alpha of the wing, isn't it? For li from the linear approximation from the wing plus eta of tail times S of t upon S times CL alpha of tail times alpha at tail, right? This CL at tail is varied because of alpha at tail, isn't it? And we know that since it's a symmetric airfoil, uh, symmetric tail, we have CL naught zero of the tail. CL naught of the tail is zero. Okay. Okay. So this is alpha and V infinity. Right. This is power. Tricky. So by comparing, so what is alpha of t? So this is CL naught plus CL alpha into alpha of the entire aircraft is equals to CL naught of wing plus CL alpha of wing multiplied by X bar CG minus, sorry, into alpha of wing plus eta, this is nothing but alpha, alpha of wing is nothing but alpha here, isn't it? So eta of horizontal tail times ST upon S times CL of tail multiplied by alpha of tail. What is alpha of tail? 1 minus dou epsilon by dou alpha, right? Alpha of tail into alpha plus I of t minus epsilon naught, okay? So by comparing the constants and coefficients, the CL naught of the entire aircraft is equals to CL naught of wing plus eta ht of horizontal tail multiplied by st upon s CL alpha of tail multiplied by it minus epsilon naught. For so assume you can assume epsilon naught is small otherwise epsilon naught in general is positive you saw that expression right. So epsilon naught is 2 times CL naught upon 2 pi E A R. So that's a positive expression. So you can keep it as it is. So, so this is one equation that talks about total lift of a wing and tail combination. Okay. So and then we'll talk about CL alpha by comparing the coefficients of alpha. What I have is CL alpha of wing plus 
So I have the coefficient for alpha is CL alpha of wing, and there is a coefficient for alpha from the tail contribution, which is horizontal tail times ST upon S times CL alpha of tail, CL alpha of tail times 1 minus dou epsilon upon dou alpha. Okay. This is the contribution from tail here. Okay. So, sorry, uh, wing and tail combination. Okay. So, we have the CL alpha of wing. So, for a wing alone, these two terms is disappear, is not it? So, we just had this for wing alone convenience. Total aircraft CL naught is wing CL naught and total aircraft CL alpha is wing CL alpha. Okay. Now, we need to talk about moment. Right. So, this is the lift uh, details about the CL naught and CL alpha of the entire aircraft. Now, let us talk about the pitching moment about CG. So, about CG, the y axis is into the board here. right? So, y axis is into the board. So, anything, any moment that creates pitch up, no sub moment for this UAV, mo no sub motion is, is considered as positive and nose down, the, mom the moment that creates nose down, uh, nose down motion is considered as negative moment. Right? So, now the moment about CG of this aircraft is nothing but moment M is equals to moment about aerodynamic center of wing right? plus lift of wing right? because lift of wing is contributing towards no sub moment, right? no, no sub motion. So, lift of wing times the corresponding distance between the CG and the AC. Right? So, this is the distance. So, I am subtracting XAC from XCG what I have is the momentum between AC and CG here. So, multiplied by XCG, I am subtracting XAC from XCG, XAC of wing. Okay. So, this is the pitch up moment and then because of the wing and then the tail has a lift, it tries to, there is no uh, pitching moment coefficient about the aerodynamic center because of the symmetric nature. So, we have lift at the tail that contributes towards no zone moment. So, that is a negative moment, right. So, which is equivalent to minus lift at tail times times x bar x AC of tail. I am subtracting this CG distance from AC of tail, right. This is AC of tail. x AC of tail minus x CG. So, this equals to half rho infinity square S yes, C bar times C m of the entire aircraft is equals to half rho V infinity square S yes, times C bar C m A C of the wing, right. That corpo this corresponds to this particular term, right. This corresponds to the moment about aerodynamic center, whereas the reference area is S yes, and the reference. Um, characteristic length is a mean aerodynamic or C bar and the velocity of the wing is con uh, aircraft is equivalent to the velocity at the wing itself. Right? So, plus half rho v square S yes, times C L of wing multiplied by x C G minus x A C of wing minus. So, the lift at the tail is because of the flow at the tail. The flow at the tail is half rho v prime square, but half rho v infinity prime square times the s of t, right? Reference area is the should be s of t multiplied by s of t multiplied by C L of tail times the momentum x A C of tail minus x C G. Okay. So, if I, if I divide this entire equation by half rho v square s c bar, so I have it in the non-dimensional form C m is equals to, so C m a c of the wing plus C l of wing which is C l naught of wing plus C l alpha of wing times alpha multiplied by x bar or x bar C G minus x bar A C of wing, right. where x bar is x upon C bar. 
okay any x bar x subscript something by c bar is nothing but x bar subscript okay so minus what i have is half rho v prime square v infinity prime square upon half rho v square is s of uh, eta eta of horizontal tail we just discussed so where here so where where eta eta of uh, horizontal tail is equals to half rho v infinity prime square upon half rho v infinity square okay what is cl of tail here s of t upon s okay so cl alpha cl of tail is cl alpha of tail times alpha at the tail right because it's a symmetric error fall cl not is zero of the tail multiplied by the momentum x bar ac of tail minus x bar cg so this is x bar ac of tail so this is a momentum here right so where where x bar is equals to x upon c bar so you can have anything in the subscript uh, so yeah either cg or ac or xac of t or v right it's a non dimensional length isn't it so i am dividing length upon c bar which is with a characteristic length what i get is a non dimensional length here so this particular term is sometimes also called as st upon s multiplied by this particular term is also called as tail volume ratio so v ht is equals to st upon s times lt lt upon c bar where lt is the distance between ac of tail and cg so what i'll call it as x bar ac of tail minus x bar cg right but i'm not going to use it for the time being so uh, so when we talk about the iterations then we'll try to use it uh, till then i'd like to keep it as it is right so i'm not using this tail volume ratio horizontal tail volume ratio this is called tail volume ratio which is for the horizontal tail and we also have something called vertical tail volume ratio that we are going to soon discuss about it okay so now comparing the constants and coefficients of alpha so so this cm can be expressed as the cm can be of the entire aircraft in the linear regime can be expressed as cm not plus cm alpha into alpha now with from these two equations comparing the constants and coefficients what i have is cm not of the aircraft is cm ac of the wing plus cl not of wing times x bar cg minus x bar ac of wing right so this is contribute the cg is behind ac this is contributing for a positive cm not am i correct or not and and then this is minus eta of tail eta of horizontal tail st upon s times x bar ac of tail minus x bar cg right so this is x bar ac of tail x bar ac of tail minus x bar cg multiplied by cl alpha of tail cl alpha of tail times 1 minus so i of t minus epsilon not okay this is my expression for cm not so you need to You, whenever you uh, it is required you will be able to, you should be able to derive it quickly you now it happens by practice you need to practice it multiple times and uh, you need to understand the contribution from each and every term so that you can easily get back to this equation so we'll we'll do it couple of times so that you'll also be comfortable with the terms here right so this is cm not whereas cm alpha of the entire aircraft is from cl alpha of wing multiplied by x bar cg minus x bar ac of wing 
right and minus of eta of tail eta of uh, horizontal tail and then s of t upon s times my x bar ac of tail minus x bar cg right times the cl alpha of tail multiplied by 1 minus dou epsilon by dou alpha right this is the cm alpha of the entire aircraft so for this aircraft to so it's an important expression so please try to derive multiple times so that you can get you get used of the get used to this equation so in this equation if you can see we what we need our aim is cm not has to be less than 0 and cm alpha has to be greater than sorry cm not has to be greater than 0 and cm alpha has to be less than 0 so look at this particular expression so for cm alpha has to be less than 0 say if the cg is behind the aerodynamic center okay if the cg is behind the aerodynamic this is contri this contributes towards positive pitching moment right so this first term contributes towards positive pitching moment because cl alpha of course we know it's positive so eta is positive sc upon s is positive and then the tail is behind the cg right this is positive this contributes towards positive and cl alpha is positive so 1 minus dou epsilon by dou alpha is always less than 1 less than or equal to 1 at maximum right so second term is negative have it so we need to choose this particular number strong enough to overcome this positive right so the offset between these two should not be very high okay so that the tail so the tail volume should overcome this particular positive term so if you you have to design this this is this particular term is known as tail volume ratio as we discussed so you need to choose a particular tail volume ratio in order to make this stable because it is obvious that when you have a wing and a tail at an offset the cg will of course be behind right isn't it uh, you have to mount your engine and you have to place your batteries in such a way that you bring this particular cg as close to this aerodynamic center as possible okay that is what no so now looking at the cm not term the cmac of the wing is uh, let us say if you use a cambered airfoil this is negative cambered air so in the previous lecture when we talked about reflex aerofoil you saw that you witnessed that the cl alpha is very less comparatively isn't it cl alpha of the aerofoil itself is less why because you need to compromise with the camber towards the trailing edge for a reflex aerofoil it will be upwards right to provide a pitch bend upwards so bent upwards so that it will obstruct the flow and it the flow it pushes down it gives a couple no at each and every angle of it due to that we are compromising with the camber that means we are compromising with the cl alpha which we have witnessed but in case of cambered aerofoil you have very high cl alpha right compared to the cam reflex aerofoils and the normal aerofoil but uh, you have to compromise with that negative pitching moment here right so you have cmac negative here and if this is positive right this contributes towards positive and when you have this tail setting angle say if this distance is very less comparatively let us let us assume right so in order to overcome this moment about aerodynamic center uh, this is negative right so say if this dis distance is very less then you need to have a tail setting angle here right so why because this is positive this is positive and this is positive we know that because aerodynamic center of tail is behind the cg and then s of t these two are qu positive quantities cl alpha of course we know it's positive so i of t minus epsilon not epsilon not is positive so if i of t is negative this entire term will be negative times minus negative is like it contributes towards pitch up moment that means i of t you need to have negative setting angle what does it mean so i of t is positive above when inclined above the fuselage reference line so i of t is positive when inclined above the fuselage reference line right it is negative when it is inclined or oriented below the fuselage reference line so that means you need to put an you need to set your tail in in a, with a negative orientation with respect to fuselage reference 
So by doing that, what you are exactly doing when there is a flow? So you are obstructing the flow, there is a downward force. So this downward force, even at zero angle of attack, right, tries, try, will create a pitch up moment about the CG, isn't it? So that continues, that, that, uh, that down, that CM0, the contribution of uh, tail towards positive CM0 continues, whatever the angle of attack it is, right. So this becomes what, uh, positive quantity here. So, with the proper value of this, it becomes more positive, you can trim at higher angles of attack as well, okay. So that means more the value of CM0, more the trim, trim value that, we, that I can achieve, isn't it? So that this particular quantity alone can, can uh, overcome this particular uh, limitation. Let us say in the, ca in the case where you want to have I of T 0, right, you don't want to because you are again at the expense of drag, see for, for this symmetric wing whether is it at positive angle of attack, negative angle of attack, it produces force, same force, am I correct or not, but in different directions. When it is in the positive angle of attack, it will produce upward force, when it is in the negative angle of attack, it produces downward force. That is why the CL variation with alpha for this symmetric aerofoil will be almost symmetric about angle of attack. Say if this is CL variation with angle of attack, right, for uh, symmetric aerofoil, even the stall characteristic should also be same. This is the CL versus, it is just a mirror image here. So, if you trim it at negative angles of attack here, uh, it will produce negative lift, negative CL that is in the downward direction, okay. So now, when you put it at a negative I of T, it produces a downward force, at the same time it also increases drag because of that. So in some cases where you do not want to you know, waste uh, additional energy to overcome the drag, what you try to do is to put, uh, to maintain I of T 0. If I do that, this particular term vanishes, right? But uh, if I maintain some adequate distance between CG and aerodynamic center, so I have CL0 for a cambered wing positive, right? So what I can achieve is a positive value. If this is good enough, if the distance is good enough, you can overcome the CMAC negative value. So you will be still able to trim at positive angles of attack without I of T, right? For a cambered aerofoil. If you take a symmetric aerofoil, CM0 is 0 altogether. If, you, if your wing is symmetric, CM0 is 0. In that case, what you need to do? You need to give I of T for the tail, always. Am I correct or not? If you give I of T, you get positive CM0, I of T negative for a cam symmetric aerofoil. Am I clear? Because for symmetric aerofoil, both these terms are 0 for the wing, I am talking about the wing. If it is a cambered wing, right? So, irrespective of that, whether symmetric or uh, uh, cambered aerofoil, so this still remains negative, am I correct or not? Because see, CL alpha, whether symmetric or cambered, it does not matter, it has its own CL alpha, right? And all these terms are positive, right? So this becomes negative, even though this CG is behind the AC, right? So this this term may be positive, but still, this if you choose a proper value of tail volume ratio, you will be able to achieve the CM alpha negative. Okay, whether it's cambered or uh, symmetric uh, uh, wing, it doesn't matter. But here, for a cambered wing, you need to choose I of T negative, isn't it? Why? Because or you need to choose this distance in such a way that this particular value becomes positive, right? So either you choose I of T negative, that makes CM not positive, because these two, this is negative, strong negative for C cambered aerofoils. Right? Okay, so. That is a conclusion from here, so this for a wing and tail combination, this is, this is what it has to be, the CM alpha, you get it from the wing combination as well as tail combination, right, wing and tail combination. Now, let us find out a location, so you said uh, this CM alpha, you see, is about CG, is not it, is it not about CG, CM alpha is about CG, is not it, now vary the location of CG in such a way that the CM alpha uh, so, we find out a location of the CG for which the CM alpha is 0, right. We will try to find out that location, right. So, that particular location about which the entire aircraft pitching moment is independent of angle of attack is called neutral point, right. Let us consider a location, some location. It is also location of CG, right. Say this is NP. Call it as NP. 
So this is the location of CG about which the pitching moment is independent of angle of attack of the entire aircraft. What does it mean? So CM alpha is 0. You have CM naught, but there is no CM alpha about that particular CG location. Okay. So let us figure out what is that. So I am I'm erasing this particular part right? and see uh, if you can notice this particular uh, portion CL0 plus CL, this CL0 of the entire aircraft for this winged tail combination. Your CL0 of being positive if it is a cambered airfoil, if it is symmetric airfoil this is 0 right? and then if there is no I of t this term most likely vanishes without any epsilon naught assuming epsilon naught is very small. So this term vanishes the CL of the entire aircraft is 0 in that case. Right? If it is a cambered aerofoil, that CL0 is positive, right? And if you have I of t negative, this term contributes negative because you want I of t to be negative for CM0 to be positive. Am I correct or not? So if that is the case, the overall lift of the aircraft decreases. Why? Because here near the tail you are producing a downward force, right? Near the wing you are producing an upward force. So there is a resultant force which is less than that of wing, upward, only upward force, right? Am I correct? So again, you have to compromise at CL0. If you give a negative tail setting angle, you should also compromise at CL0 here. Tail setting angle is not going to influence this CL alpha, lift curve slope of this wing and tail or the total aircraft here. Okay. So let us figure out what is the corresponding location of CG for which CM alpha is 0. So this is the, that particular point is called neutral point denoted by XNP. So this particular, if I substitute, 0 in the, for C, if I equate this equation to uh, 0, right, then CM alpha is 0, which means, so at that particular, the CG location about which CM alpha is 0 is called neutral point. So in that case, XCG becomes XNP, okay. So what I have is 0 is equals to CL alpha of wing times X bar NP minus X bar AC of wing right minus eta of tail horizontal tail st upon s times x bar ac of tail minus x bar np neutral point right multiplied by cl alpha of tail minus multiplied by 1 minus dou epsilon upon dou alpha okay so can I find out that particular NP? I, can I solve it for X, X bar NP from this equation? So X bar NP multiplied by this is CL alpha of wing. Okay. So I'm trying to okay. CL alpha of wing plus eta HT of horizontal tail times ST upon S. CL alpha of tail multiplied by 1 minus dou epsilon by dou alpha. This is equals to CL alpha of wing times X bar AC of wing plus eta ST upon S times CL alpha of tail multiplied by 1 minus 2 epsilon by 2 alpha times x x bar ac of tail right okay so this implies x bar np neutral point is equals to cl alpha of wing times x bar ac of wing plus eta of horizontal tail st upon s cl alpha of tail or say yeah cl alpha tail minus multiplied one minus dou epsilon by dou alpha times x bar ac of tail upon cl alpha of wing plus eta of horizontal tail times st upon s times cl alpha of tail multiplied by 1 minus 2 epsilon by 2 alpha, right? This is a corresponding location of neutral point.
for which CM alpha is 0. If you go beyond this neutral point location, if you locate the CG of the configuration behind the neutral point, what happens is this will become positive. Okay. So, this becomes positive which means the system becomes unstable. So, do you want me to prove that? Okay, I can prove that. I can prove that. So, you have neutral point here. Now, so this CM alpha is equals to, so take out the CG terms here, X bar CG, right, X bar CG times CL alpha of wing, okay. So, this is minus into minus, it becomes plus, plus eta of horizontal tail ST upon S multiplied by CL alpha of tail, okay, and then the correction factor 1 minus to epsilon by the alpha, right. So, I am just separating CG terms and the coefficients here. So, this will be like, okay. So, I have this CG multiplied by CL alpha is here and then this CG multiplied by this entire term minus of minus it becomes plus. I have eta ST upon S CL alpha 1 minus rho epsilon multiplied by CG is here and then I have taken CG outside XCG, okay. So, and then what I have is minus of CL alpha and then this minus term. So, I am taking minus out here. So, this minus CL uh, minus of, so this is CL alpha of wing times X bar AC of wing plus eta ST upon S eta of horizontal tail times CL alpha of uh, tail times 1 minus dou epsilon by dou alpha times X bar AC of tape, okay. This is a, so coefficient, uh, constant terms with respect to XCG, okay. So, just multiplied uh, this I have taken there, I have taken minus out so that CL alpha wing times X, X bar AC of wing is here and then I have taken this minus out so it becomes plus eta ST upon S CL alpha of tail times 1 minus dou epsilon by dou alpha multiplied by X bar AC of tail, am I correct? So, can I write this expression, right? Say, can I write this expression as x bar NP multiplied by this particular factor, okay? So, from this expression, so this particular term uh, is CL alpha times XAC of wing eta HT ST upon S CL alpha of tail 1 minus dou epsilon dou alpha multiplied by XAC of tail. So, this expression I can replace it by XNP times the denominator here, right. So, what I have is CM alpha of the aircraft is equals to, so CL alpha of wing plus eta of horizontal tail ST upon S times CL alpha of horizontal tail, right, CL alpha of tail times 1 minus dou epsilon by dou alpha. Is that what this denominator is, right? And you have the same terms here. You have the same terms here. Okay, I am taking that common. Multiplied by X bar CG minus X bar NP. Okay. So, otherwise, in other words, what I can say is, so do you remember this particular expression is nothing but total CL alpha of the aircraft. So, this is CM alpha of the aircraft, you just go back to your previous expression and see what is the total lift curve slope of aircraft, uh, wing and tail combination. This is the lift curve slope of the total aircraft, isn't it? This is nothing but CL alpha of the total aircraft. This implies, so CM alpha is equals to minus of CL alpha of, of the entire aircraft here. CL alpha is CL alpha of this entire aircraft, right, this particular term multiplied by X bar NP minus X bar CG, okay. So, now will you appreciate my initial statement? So, if this NP, if your CG crosses this NP, that means this becomes larger than this, 
So this particular term is negative. So the expression becomes positive. So CM alpha becomes positive for So your configuration, no, the CG of the configuration for to honor, in order to have static stability, longitudinal static stability, your CG should be ahead of this neutral point. Okay. So this is the thing. So this particular thing, x bar NP minus x bar CG is equals to minus of CM alpha upon CL alpha of the entire quantum. So this particular, the distance between this neutral point and center of gravity is called static margin, right? Static margin, SM is static margin. So positive static margin means what? Neutral point is behind the CG or CG is ahead of the neutral point of wing and tail combination, right? So static margin is equals to X bar NP minus X bar CG, okay? So positive static margin is the neutral, CG is behind the neutral point. This quantity is less than this neutral point, X bar NP, right? Generally it is given in percentage, 10%, 5%, 15% static margin. That will solve. While solving examples, you will be more comfortable with the terms, right? And then, so, so this is equal to minus CM alpha upon CL alpha. For a statically stable aircraft, CM alpha is negative, right? Negative of negative is positive. So you will have positive static margin, which means the CG should be ahead of the neutral point. So neutral point is nothing but the aerodynamic, similar to that of aerodynamic center of entire aircraft, okay? So, for a statically stable aircraft, CM alpha is negative and negative of negative is positive. So, CL alpha we know for the entire aircraft is positive of course. So, so if, if this is positive, which means XNP is this positive terms plus CL XCG, right? Which lies behind the neutral point lies behind the CG location. So, it is a limiting condition for stable flight and static stable flight and static unstable flight. Okay, and this is called static margin. So static margin is again is equals to minus of CM alpha upon CL alpha. Can you get something out of it? What exactly is this neutral point? Let us look about it in more detail. This is my perspective again, right? So, so it is a, you understood, right? It is like a limiting condition. Similar, for a wing alone configuration, this neutral point is nothing but there is no tail here, right? This is nothing but XAC of wing. Am I correct? For a wing alone configuration, if you substitute CL alpha T is 0, XAC of T is 0, right? So this becomes 0 and CL alpha of T does not make sense. There is no CL alpha of T, right? These two terms disappear. This term and this term disappears. What I have is XNP is equals to XAC for wing alone. wing alone x bar np is equals to cl alpha wing times x bar ac of wing plus 0 upon cl alpha of wing plus 0 which is equals to x bar ac of wing so for a wing alone configuration neutral point is nothing but the aerodynamic center of wing okay so in that case, you need to have, in order to have positive static margin, right, for a statically stable case, the CG should be ahead of this neutral point, which is nothing but the CG should be ahead of the aerodynamic center of the wing, okay? That's the reason why even uh, during our flat flight, uh, flat plate flight demonstration, we have uh, shifted by adding a small weight, we shifted our CG ahead of the neutral point there, even, which is aerodynamic center in that case, right? Okay. So now let us look at this neutral point in more detail. So what, so we have calculated CG earlier, right? How have we calculated? So X bar CG in general is equals to, in general, for a, if you consider a mass, right, which is made out of M1, M2, right? So you have Y axis and X axis. So this is at a distance M1 is at a distance of x1, m2 is at a distance of x2, right? And similarly, m1 is at a distance of y1, 
and m2 is at a distance of y2, so m3 is at a distance of y3, so on, right. So, in this case, sigma i stands from 1 to n, so m i x i upon sigma m i, right. So, which I can say, so x c g of a given body is like m 1 upon m, where m is sigma m i, right, times x 1 plus m 2 upon m times x 2 plus m 3 upon m times x 3 plus so on up to m n upon m times x n. So, is it not a weighted average? So, you have weights here to which end every x 1, x 2 you have weights here, weighted average. So, C g is nothing but the weighted average of their locations, weighted average of masses, is not it here weighted average by, by their masses, right. Similar to that, can we look at this expression x n p. So, x n p is equals to C l alpha of wing upon the total C l alpha of the aircraft, which is like total mass of the aircraft, is not it. So, total mass of a body is like so C l alpha of wing plus eta of horizontal tail S t upon S times C l alpha of tail times 1 minus dou epsilon by dou alpha. Am I correct? So, is it not the to weight total C l alpha of the aircraft? So, can I express this as the total C l alpha of the aircraft, right? So, this multiplied by x bar a c of wing, right, plus eta of tail, horizontal tail, s t upon s times C l alpha of tail multiplied by 1 minus dou epsilon by dou alpha divided by again the total, total C l of the aircraft, which is C l alpha of wing plus eta h t s t upon s times C l alpha of tail multiplied by 1 minus dou epsilon by dou alpha, right. So, this entire thing multiplied by x a c of tail, x bar a c of tail. Am I correct or not? So, neutral point is the weighted average of C l alpha lift curve slope of wing and lift curve slope of tail. Do you accept this? Do you appreciate that? So, let us let us understand it in a bit more detail, right. I, I think you are not happy with this. So, let us understand it with a bit more detail, right. What exactly is this or these terms, you know? So, they are disturbing a bit, is not it? So, let us assume a case where I have a wing here, right, there is one wing. Let us assume an identical wing which is at a far, far away, right. I have one wing, right. I have the same wing, similar wing which is a, which is located at a distance in the downstream. I have two such wings, right. Do you, do you, do you follow that? So, the area which means the planform area is same and the C l alpha of that wings are same, okay. And assume that there is very minimal downwash, there is zero downwash. Okay. In that case, what happens? So, I have a main wing with C l alpha, right? And then this particular downwash is 0, that means eta is equals to 1. So, in that case, eta is equals to 1. And S t upon S is 1 because I have two identical wings, one as wing and one as tail. So, this becomes 1 in that case. Am I correct? And C l alpha of tail is nothing but C l alpha of wing, both are same. And there is no downwash, that is 0. So, this entire expression will turns out to be C l alpha of wing times 2 times the C l alpha of wing. Am I correct or not? Multiplied by x, a, x bar a c of wing, okay. Similarly, plus, so this x neutral point in that particular case where you have two identical wings as wing and tail combination, okay. So, and then here eta of tail is 1 right, because there is no downwash. So, S t upon S is again 1. So, C l alpha of tail is nothing but C l alpha of wing, am I correct? So, downwash is 0, epsilon is 0, divided by 
again CL alpha, two times of CL alpha of wing times X bar AC of tail. So, this is nothing but this, in this case the neutral point is nothing but X bar AC of wing plus X bar AC of tail that is nothing but wing 2 upon 2. It is just the midpoint of separation. It lies at the midpoint of the distances between X aerodynamic center of wing and X aerodynamic center of tail. How many of you appreciate this? Okay. So, that is nothing but the neutral point. Right. So, what are these terms here? So, now you, you can understand, right? This is, these are nothing but correction factors to the CL alpha. Am I correct or not? So, when there is no downwash, that means this is gone and this is 1. And you, this is nothing but the correction factor for or normalizing factor for with respect to the wing. Right? When you have two similar wings, this becomes 1. This is just a normalizing factor. So, this will be equal to the wing CL alpha itself. So, this entire term is nothing but a correction factor to the CL alpha of that particular geometry. If it is a tail, if it is just an identical wing, that is nothing but one and the same. If the downwash is minimal, if the downwash is 0 and this efficiency is 1. Right? Do you appreciate that? So, in that case, it is nothing but the midpoint of the distances separating these two wings. Right? So, if you do not accept this result, we will try to demonstrate it. Right? So, in the next lecture, we will have a demonstration of two identical wings and we will find, I will prove that the neutral point is the distance like midway between their aerodynamic centers. Okay? Thank you.